ZX is a Japanese language only TCG first released back in 2013 and is still going strong as of 2021. Looking over the rules, you'll find plenty of elements that may be familiar to TCG fans, especially those who have played Duel Masters before or other similar games. It has a life system, consisting of cards from the deck placed face down that are removed as you take damage. It has a resource system divided into five colors, each with their own unique mechanics and game plans. And its resource system uses resource cards that you can increase once per turn and untap, or in this game reboot, at the start of each of your turns. Like Duel Masters, these resources are not specific cards in your deck, like the lands in Magic the Gathering, but are any card in your deck played into the resource zone. ZX also has an extra deck filled with powerful creatures and effects that can be played by meeting their conditions, much like in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, beyond these similarities, however, ZX has a few points that separate from its peers. Some are relatively minor, but still pretty neat, like the overboost mechanic we'll see later. Uh, but the most notable uh, difference is that unlike other TCGs where each player has their own field of play, in ZX, players share the same 3x3 grid to play out their cards. This is definitely the game's biggest selling point, and really gives the game a different feel from other TCGs. Another interesting feature, which I'll just touch on quickly, is that while the blue deck I bought was packaged in the usual way, just a bunch of cards in a cardboard pack, like most decks in other TCGs, the black-green deck I bought actually came with its own deck box and package of sleeves included, both sleeves and deck boxes, including art from within the deck. The sleeves, like most Art sleeves did need oversleeves in order to have any kind of decent shuffling, but they're still a pretty neat little bit of extra value and a way to bling out your deck even if you end up rotating most of the cards from the starter deck out of it. Setup for ZX can be a bit of a process, there's a couple extra steps than you'll find in the average TCG. Uh, first up you start with your player card. Player cards don't have any effects on their own, but they do unlock certain unique cards and effects giving each player their own playstyle. Uh, most importantly though, on the grid, the player card marks where the players are located and where the opposing player has to attack in order to deal damage. So the first thing you do in the game is you place your player card in front of you like this, and if you visualize the grid around it, it's going to look something like this. Uh, the player card is always in the row closest to you and in the middle of that row. Likewise, the opponent's player card is going to be placed in the middle of the row closest to them. The next step is to take a card with the ability starting card, and place it face down on your player card. Likewise, the opponent does the same. Then if you've got a ZX overboost card, you put the bottom of your chosen card on the bottom of your player card. We'll get more into how overboost works as we get into the gameplay. Then you set aside your extra deck, in this game called a Dunamis, and finally you get to shuffle your deck and move into drawing your starting hand. The starting hand is four cards, and if you don't like it, you can send it back and try again. In this case, uh, we don't have any particularly strong early game plays. We have a seven cost, a four cost, a four cost, and another seven cost, and generally we'd like to start out with either a two or three cost card, so we're gonna try again. Uh, in this game, the mulligans are very simple. You put the cards back, reshuffle, and you draw back up to four. Note that you can only do this once, so if you put your hand back and you try again and you don't like the second hand, well, you're kind of stuck with it at this point. Now that both players have their starting hand, each player takes four cards from the top of their deck and puts it face down as their life. Then they take two cards off the top of their deck and place them face up into their resources. Finally, now both players can flip up their starting cards and the game is ready to begin. For the purpose of this how to play video, I will be ignoring most of the card effects. ZX has been around for a few years now, and some of the card effects have gotten pretty long and convoluted, and focusing on the card effects instead of the core gameplay is just going to drag things down by quite a lot. So apart from the event cards and any cards played out of the extra deck, I'll be ignoring pretty much all uh, card effects, especially those on ZX's, which are the creatures of this game. <laughs> At the start of each turn in ZX, you'll go through several phases, some of which will be familiar to fans of TCGs and some of them are unique to ZX. The first step is the reboot step, where you take any of your cards in your sleep position and turn them to the reboot position. 
Uh, next up is your draw phase, where you draw two cards from the deck, although for the first turn player, they skip their first draw step. Next up, you move into a resource step, where you can take one card from your hand and play it into your resource zone. So in this case, we'll take one seven cost card, since we're not going to be able to play that for a while, and we put it into our resource zone like that. Finally, we have an ignition step, where we can take any of the defeated cards that have gone into our charge area and trade them in for an attempt at getting new units. Again, we don't have any cards in our charge, so we're going to be skipping this step for our first turn here. Finally, we get into the main phase, and this is where things open up and you're able to do pretty much anything else in the rest of the game. You're able to play out ZXs from your hand by meeting their cost. You're able to play events from your hand by meeting their cost. Events in this game are similar to spells in other games. You play them, apply their effects, and then put them into the trash. Uh, you're able to activate the effects of your ZXs in play. You're able to play ZX extras from your Dunamis. Uh, you can only do this once per turn, though. You don't get the chance to do any of the extra deck spamming you would normally be able to do in games like Yu-Gi-Oh! It's only a once per turn out of the Dunamis. And even more interesting is that you're also able to do attacks during the main phase. Many other games will have their own dedicated attack step in ZX. Uh, all of this happens in the main phase, which means that you can sequence things like play a unit, immediately attack with a unit to open up a new space, and then play a new unit into that space you just opened up with the attack. It can create for some pretty interesting turns, especially later on in the game. However, since we have a relatively limited number of resources, instead we are just going to pay three to play out a three cost ZX from our hand into this center position on the grid here. When playing a card, you can play it at any open position on the grid except for the opponent's player card area. Although if you play it on one of your units, um, the unit underneath just goes to the trash. Also note that when playing out units, at least one of the resources you sleep in order to play that unit needs to match the color of the unit being played. In the case of the Izumi deck over here, that's not too big an issue since every card in the deck is blue, so there's not really any practical limits. But over here, which I just realized I've forgotten to play resources into, but the Yamato deck over here has both green and black cards in it, so you need to pay a little bit of attention to how you sleep your resources in order to play cards. So, to finish up the Azumi deck's first turn, we are going to do an attack. Now, the way attacking works is, first up, you rest the attacking unit and you choose a location to attack that is anywhere either horizontal or vertical of that unit. So, here, 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 or here is where the center unit here is able to attack. So, we're obviously going to attack over here on their player card location. Now, they have a unit there, so we enter into a unit attack. First up, we check whether either player has any boot effects or events that they want to play to influence this combat. We check if the opponent has any. If they don't have any, it comes to a check for us, followed by a final check for our opponent. And then if all of us pass priority, uh, the attack goes through. If anyone does have an effect to play there, we enter into this you, opponent, you, back and forth to make sure that there are no additional effects to be played. Since neither player has any of these effects ready to go at the moment, we get into the attack resolution. We apply the power of the attacker as damage to the defender, and then if the defender has enough damage marked on it that is equal to or greater than their own power, they are defeated and moved over into the charge. Uh, in this case, 4,500 power applies 4,500 damage, and the unit defending the player card has 4,500 power of its own, therefore it has taken enough damage and it is defeated. And that is the end of our first turn here. You'll note that we have one more unit on our player card, but it's not able to attack anywhere. It can only attack uh, within one square, so it's just sort of chilling here and defending our player card. Now we move into the Yamato player's turn, and their turn is going to go in much the same way. They're going to draw two cards, play out one resource, and as they move into their ignition step, they actually have a card sitting over here in their charge, so we'll go a bit into how ignition works. During Ignition, you can discard uh, one card from your charge area, and you flip the top card of your deck. If it has an Ignition icon, which is this icon right here, uh, then you can play the unit. If it does not have an Ignition icon, it just goes into the trash. So, this one does have an Ignition icon, so we will play it out here in a position to attack our opponent's uh, starting card on their player card. 
You can do this action as many times as you have cards in your charge, although note that there is a limit of four cards in your charge at any given time. Finally, the Yamato player heads into their main phase and they have a few decisions to make. They can play a unit on their player card to defend themselves. Uh, if they did not, then they would otherwise be probably taking damage on their next turn since they have nothing defending them here. Or they can play another unit uh, over in this location here to attack the opponent's player card. In this case, they're a bit more worried about taking their own damage than in trying to force damage through on the opponent, so they'll just pay three to play out a unit onto their player card to defend it. Then, to round out their turn, they'll just do a couple of attacks. First, they'll attack from their player card at the card that we played to attack them, uh, which defeats our unit here. And they will attack here, which will defeat the unit we have defending our player card. Uh, they've performed a clean sweep of our field, that's about all that they can do right now, so it'll head back into the Azumi player's turn. So, we draw two. Play out another resource. And we'll move into the ignition step, and we're going to hope we get lucky here because we're a bit on the back foot. Uh, so we'll pay out one to flip our first card. This one has an ignition icon that is lucky. We will put it here in the center position. And then we'll pay another one, flip another card. This one does not have an ignition icon, so it just goes into the trash. Uh, but we got one unit out of that, so that is pretty good here. Next up, we'll pay four and play out another unit here to defend our uh, player card. And we will just make two quick attacks to clear out our opponent's two units. Things head back over to the Yamato player's turn. And they're going to try for their ignition again. First flip hits an ignition icon. And then for the second, uh, that one's a miss. Pay two for a ZX. Pay two for another one. Uh, we'll just put this one here as a bit of a speed bump against our opponent trying to damage our life, and we'll move into our own attacks. First up, we'll apply 4,500 damage here. That's not enough to defeat it, but the damage does stay on over turn. So another 2,500 damage puts it up to 7,000, which is enough to now defeat that unit. That's about all that the uh, Yamato player is able to manage this turn, so they are just going to pass it on. Draw two. One resource. Ignition. Miss. And our hand is looking a little bit threadbare, so what we're going to do is we're going to pay two to use an event here. Uh, this is Rigel Star Christmas. So this is an event if you have one or more card with Rigel in their name in your resource, which we do, uh, you draw two cards. And then if you have three or more, which we do, uh, you can take one of your opponent's ZX units that's not on their player square and put it into their deck and shuffle. So we'll get rid of this unit here. And finally, if we have six or more cards with Rigel in the name, we can actually take one of those Rigel named cards and place it into uh, any of the positions except our opponent's player card. But uh, we're not quite at that threshold yet. And fortunately for us, we ended up drawing what we wanted. We got another three cost ZX. So we'll play that uh, a bit defensively here. And we will just make our attacks to clear out the opponent's field yet again. Yamato draws two, resource, and ignition. Uh, that's a miss. And a miss. Uh, pay five, play out a ZX, and attack. Draw two, uh, resource, ignition, uh, hit. That was the lucky one. Play that in the center. And now we can actually start pushing a bit of aggression here. It's, we will pay out one three cost ZX and another three cost ZX. I uh, will attack with these two first to clear out the defender. And then we will attack with this one uh, directly on the player card. Now, since there's nothing defending the player card, we go through and actually hit the opponent's life. Uh, when you hit the life, you flip over the top card. If it has an ignition icon, you play the card. And then if it doesn't, it just goes into the charge. 
That was a pretty good turn for us. We finally got some damage in. It's now the Nayamato player's next turn. Draw two. Resource. Uh, pay three for a ZX. Attack. Clear out this unit. Pay three more for a unit in the center here, which then also attacks. So they've left themselves a bit vulnerable uh, because we've still got these two units here, but they've also uh, cleared away our defender again, forcing us to continue to devote resources on defense. Draw two. Uh, resource, ignition. Uh, that's a hit. Put that one here. Ignition. That is also a hit. We'll put that one here. We're looking in pretty good shape right here. And we'll move into our main phase. Now, because we want to be able to defend our unit here, we are going to play an event. Azumi and Rigel Oath to the Blue Sky. Now, what this does is it lets us ignition over boost our player card. Um, now, how this works, we flip the card over like this for the bottom half. We take one of the top halves out of our dunamis. And now we have a very large and very powerful card on our defensive side. It has 10,500 power. It has the absolute boundary ability, which means it can't be targeted by an opponent's effects. And once per turn, it can boot, uh, so tap, to put uh, two cards with Rigel in their name in our charge into the trash to draw two cards, uh, choose two cards to put them on top of our deck in any order. Then we look through our deck, choose one reunion among them, and make it appear on a normal square without a ZX in the reboot state and returning the rest of the cards back into the deck and shuffling it. Um, if there's one flaw with ZX, it's that some of the effects can get very, very wordy. Uh, for us, though, most importantly, it means that we have a very powerful defender watching our player side, which means that we can devote more of our attention on attacking. So we will attack with this overboost to clear out the opponent's center. Pay three to play out another unit here in that recently vacated spot. Uh, attack with this one here, and now we've got two possible attacks. So we will attack in here, uh, no ignition here, and they've now hit their limit of four, so this card is just going to go into the trash. We'll then attack again to knock them down to one life. And we hit an ignition card here that also has an additional effect, uh, life recovery. Life recovery works a bit like heal triggers in Vanguard. Uh, when it's flipped, if you have less life than your opponent, you recover one life. So you just take a card from the top of your deck there. Each deck can have four cards with the life recovery ignition effect and four cards with the void bringer ignition effect, which destroys one of the opponent's attackers. Uh, these let you get a bit of extra value when they're flipped out of your life. Furthermore, since this card is an ignition card, we get to place it on our player card like this. Now Yamato's in a really rough situation, so they're gonna try and do their best to salvage it. Draw two, uh, resource. They're gonna hope for some good ignitions here. Uh, first, ignition hit, very good. We'll place that here. Uh, second, is a miss. Third, another hit, we'll place that one here, and then Finally, we'll might as well go all the way. We'll flip over the fourth, and that one's another miss. So we'll start up our turn with an attack here to clear out the center position. Pay four to put a ZX into that center position there. Attack for 6,000. Uh, attack for 4,500. That totals up to the 10,500 that we need, uh, which defeats the overboost. So the top half is now defeated, and the bottom half reverts back to being just the player card, which we now have the opportunity to attack, uh, dealing one damage. Now, unfortunately, even though the Yamato player has a three-cost card in their hand, they'd be able to play out here. There's no space left on the uh, center grid here for them to play it. Uh, in order to play a card, it has to be over a uh, rebooted ZX. You can't play new units over top of sleeping ZX. So their turn ends here and we move over 
to the Rigel player's turn. They will draw two. Uh, resource one. And given how full the field is right now, they are going to skip their charge phase. They want a little bit more control over which units they place where. We'll start with an attack on the flanks here. I'll uh, attack for 3,000 and another 3,000 to clear out this center unit. Pay three to play out another unit, and we're going to hopefully uh, go in for the kill here. So we will attack to clear out the defending unit on the player card. Attack here for one damage. Uh, no ignition and no abilities. And we'll attack in here for hopefully the final damage. Um, once again, no ignition, no abilities. So that is the game there. And that is ZX. Now, obviously, a proper game of ZX is going to look a bit different than what we saw in this video because you will actually be paying attention to all of the card effects you're using instead of ignoring them. Uh, however, this should hopefully give you a good overview of what the turn structure is like and some of the positional aspects of gameplay, which are definitely the most unique feature of the game and its strongest selling point. Now, if you decide that you want to try this game out for yourself, you can do the usual and just buy starter decks on Amazon, but ZX also provides printable PDFs of uh, small introductory decks on their website. You can also find them in the fan wiki, which might also be a bit easier. These introductory decks are similar to the very bare bones and basic introductory decks provided by other games, but the advantage of them being a printable PDF rather than a physical product means that you can print them off even if you don't have any local game stores carrying the card game. Uh, which is probably going to be most people living outside of Japan. The cards are all in Japanese, unfortunately, but the fan wiki keeps an up-to-date list of translation for pretty much every card in the ZX game so far, so you should at least be able to figure out what your cards do for a game. It's not going to be as convenient as having English text, but it should be enough to let you experience the game for yourself. So, I will just leave the video here for now. If you have any questions about ZX, I will do my best to answer them in the comments below. And of course, any other comments are more than welcome as well. Until the next time, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.